Number 1. Gene. Edited. Human. Embryo. It all began with genetically modified tomatoes, then came genetically modified chickens, and now genetically modified human embryos. Earlier this year, a team of American researchers successfully corrected a gene mutation responsible for a heart disease in humans. It was the first known case of gene editing performed on human embryos in the U.S., and scientists did it using the gene editing tool CRISPR. The groundbreaking experiment raised many questions, like how safe was the procedure, and what are the ethics of manipulating the human genome? Joining us from Portland, Oregon, to answer these questions is Dr. Shukrat Matalipov. Dr. Matalipov played a senior role in this game-changing research. He's also the principal investigator at the Center for Embryonic Cell and Gene Therapy of Oregon Health and Science University. Dr. Matalipov, welcome to Quirks and Quarks. Thank you. Why were you interested in applying CRISPR gene editing technology to human embryos? Uh, in, at my center, we are um, interested in, in ways of uh, changing uh, mutant genes back to the normal. Um, and we actually interested in genes that the human population carry and then often transmit to next generation, so-called germline mutations. Um, so these inheritable mutations, actually, uh, there are thousands of them and cause a variety of conditions. In this case, uh, um, this mutation that encodes the heart muscle um, would cause hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's a heart disease. So the idea was always that the, to prevent uh, you know, recurrence of these diseases, um, we could you know, develop uh, approaches where we could change this mutant gene back to normal. And we have to do it, uh, you know, in either sperm and eggs. So those are cells that usually parents will will pass to children, and and that's how embryo is formed, or right after sperm fertilized egg. So um, we used CRISPR because it's actually um, just a recent development that allows us to to really access to that very specific mutant gene um, and induce the change that we want. What's the advantage of doing this gene therapy at the embryonic stage? Um, so basically, once uh, the mutant gene is transmitted and the child is born, uh, very little sometimes we can do because it's already made a damage uh, to organ or tissue. And most of the time it's multiplied, so we're dealing with billions of cells in, in organs. And we have now a task of, you know, getting and accessing every of this mutant gene and changing back to normal, which is almost impossible to do. So the idea is that we, we do it much, much earlier, um, right before uh, fertilization or at the time of fertilization. So we could, you know, the child or embryo already formed would, would, would be with normal gene. Well, briefly, take me through what you did in your experiment. Um, so first we would have to identify the, the disease um, that, that passed from generation to generation. And sometimes, as um, we, we know about them, because family already have a children uh, with this mutation, and probably they have a family history. And that's how we, we have uh, many families that have this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So once we, uh, we identify this mutation, we would ask, for example, in this case, a male carrier of this mutation to donate his, his uh, sperm, so it's reproductive cells, so we could try to develop um, this CRISPR tool that would kind of recognize and flag this mutant gene, the only mutant gene. And once it does it, it actually induces cut in that gene. So it's a kind of damage. So it would disrupt the, the chain of that, you know, code. Um, and then the, when sperm with that disrupted gene enters into the egg after fertilization, what happens is that there is a, uh, the eggs have DNA repair mechanism. So basically, they're always looking for this kind of uh, the disrupted genes. In this case, immediately recognize that there is this um, damage in, in one of the genes. And they recruit all the machinery that normally they have to repair it, so basically to glue back that broken piece. And by doing that, they actually would repair any abnormalities that came with that sperm. So this is uh, the Actually, yes, the CRISPR kind of initially flags the mutant gene, but eggs and, and, and embryo later 
correct by itself. Oh, I see. So the CRISPR doesn't fix the gene. It's the, it's the egg that fixes that damaged gene. So based on what you've done so far, how safe is this procedure? So far, I think uh, it seems like it's safe since we didn't detect any abnormality, you know, any off-target mutations, even though we, we say, you know, it's it's been done with, with most, you know, um, modern sequencing technologies, but there is still possibility that so we missed something. Um, but uh, again, I think it's uh, we, we need to probably develop much, much thorough and maybe some alternative ways of uh, looking at this off-target mutation using maybe some uh, completely different assays and before we, we say it's, it's completely safe. Now, since your experiment, there has been some criticism. Uh, renowned biologist George Church at Harvard University thinks that the heart disease-causing mutation could have been just deleted and not repaired, as your results suggested. What do you think about that approach? Yeah, I think the uh, so basically this is uh, because of uh, you know this type of self repair um, uh, believed to be occurs very very rarely. In our case, as I said, it's fifty percent cases. Uh, so this was pretty unusual, um, and of course the the, the uh, most of the community. Uh, wants to reproduce these results and and to see if there was maybe something that we missed. So we actually have done quite a f uh, uh, extensive work to retesting many of our samples, and we we now quite sure that it was actually repair, but there wasn't wasn't any any removing the whole gene. Well, your work was looking at a form of heart disease. Uh, could this approach be used to treat other genetic diseases in humans? Absolutely. Uh, so we, we're talking about the genetic code and how how embryos would repair the, you know, mutations, you know, using this approach. And since, you know, um, DNA is pretty much, you know, it's the same, just different code, and it could be used for a variety of different mutations. Um, and there are also, you know, um, as I said, about several thousand you know, gene mutations that we know for sure cause human disease. And, uh, and the idea is that we could develop this type of CRISPR um, that would target all these known human mutations. And, and hopefully in the future we could develop a whole library of the CRISPR that would, that would be specific for these mutations. And, and hopefully if procedures shown to be safe, we could uh, clearly you know, move forward to, to clinical trials sometimes in the future. Well, wow, sounds like it could be a very powerful tool for treating disease. Uh, now, some people might take it to the extreme and say that, well, this is opening the floodgate to human eugenics and designer babies. Uh, what do you respond to those ethical concerns? I think it's a, it's a legitimate concern, of course. Uh, uh, and uh, so that just because it can be used for some um, unintended you know, the non-disease-causing um, experiments, I think uh, we need to regulate it. Dr. Metalipov, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, too. Dr. Shukrat Metalipov is the principal investigator at the Center for Embryonic Cell and Gene Therapy of the Oregon Health and Science University.